You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Thanks for staying with 11 Live Morning News. It is Tuesday, October 24th. Your time now 647. For the next 11 minutes, only on 11 Alive, we'll have nonstop coverage of everything you need to know to plan your day. Today, a final ruling on Georgia's abortion law expected just hours from now. Why it is so significant for millions of people in our state. Staffing and truck shortages, we are learning more about why some of Atlanta's fire stations are temporarily closed. The response from City Council. And we're off to a chilly start this morning, but I've got an 11 live day ahead. We'll talk about that. Nothing good happening in the world of the West Expressway I-20, a nightmare out towards Villa Rica and Temple with just about both sides of the interstate closed. Highway 78 is your alternate, and believe me, the rest of the rush hour, it's here. We are kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news with a major ruling on Georgia's so-called fetal heartbeat abortion law. It is coming later this morning. As it stands, the law currently bans most abortions. Once a heartbeat is detected at about six weeks, the state Supreme Court will release its ruling at nine this morning, deciding whether or not to keep it or throw it out. 11 Alive's Ariana Manis joins us now with a preview. Ariana. Good morning. The fate of Georgia's abortion ban rests here at the state's highest court. And at 9 a.m. is when we expect to learn how justices are ruling around the heartbeat law. Now, justices, they're expected to determine whether the heartbeat law is viable as it was passed and signed by Governor Brian Kemp back in 2019 when Roe v. Wade was still the law of the land. Now, both sides, they delivered oral arguments in front of the state Supreme Court back in March. That came as a result of the state appealing Fulton County Superior Court Judge Robert McBurney's ruling that the ban should never have been enacted. As of right now, the law currently bans most abortion in the states as soon as a fetal heartbeat is detected, often around six weeks. It's one of the most restrictive abortion bans that we're seeing across the country. Now, today's decision from the state Supreme Court is final, but it is very likely that state legislators, we can see them attempt to craft a very similar version of the heartbeat law if we see justices rule against the ban today. Back to you. And I'm Liza Lucas. This morning, three Atlanta fire stations are closed due to a shortage of fire trucks and firefighters. City Council now scrambling to find a solution. The fire department down 17 trucks as of right now. 25% of their engines unable to run a call. 60% of their ladder trucks also out of service. Now, safe station 22 on Hollywood Road, station 23 on Howe Mill, and station 30 on Cleveland Avenue all temporarily closed. We need 30 open, and I'll tell you why the lights, it lights up an entire corner. The element that's going on across the street from where 30 is now, we've never had before until 30 closed. It is a issue that uh, I'm sure it uh, does you more than anyone, but it, it keeps me up at night, very honestly. Um, you have honestly. no idea. Council says their goal is to find Atlanta Fire the money to place a large order up front to build up the fleet. Chief Smith also assuring that firefighters are answering and arriving to the calls. You may just not see those ladder trucks. The department also facing supply chain issues with some orders not able to be delivered until late next year. Christy. Right now, a look at new crime statistics from Atlanta police that shows homicides are down across the city. Here's a breakdown of the numbers. According to Police Chief Darren Sheerbaum, homicides in Atlanta are down 18% compared to 2022. And so far this year, the department has reported 107 homicides across six zones of the city. The chief says almost every zone has seen a drop except zone four, which covers Southwest Atlanta communities, including Adamsville, Ben Hill, Cascade, and Greenbrier. While homicides are down, there is a rise in two areas, shoplifting and vehicle thefts. When it comes to stolen vehicles, the city's focus is on Kia and Hyundai thefts, which are up a whopping 485 percent. Police report Zone 4 has the highest theft rate with 608 thefts this year. And finally, new numbers show a crackdown on drugs. Right now, Atlanta police say they have closed 62 drug houses this year. That was a look at your top headlines. All right, Melissa, we are headed out to enjoy an 11 Alive day. It is a perfect 11 Alive day. There's a little something for everybody out there. It is chilly and crisp this morning, so if you like that cool fall feeling, that is what the morning is for. But the afternoon is going to be mild and bright, and in that sunshine, feel really nice outside. So that'll be for those 
warmer weather fans out there, but an 11 alive day it is, and we're going to have another one tomorrow. So a pair of 11 alive days out there. 53 in Atlanta though right now, and we have a much colder start in the suburbs this morning under that partly cloudy sky. It's 47 in Duluth. Athens is 45. Cold spot in Peachtree City. It is 44. Look at the North Georgia mountains starting off in the 30s. This crisp and cool mornings have really felt spectacular outside, but I do have some warmer weather on the way by the end of the work week. But for today with a mostly sunny sky, will be on our way up into the mid 60s by noon. So even though the kids need to go out the door with jackets this morning, already by lunchtime, they can shed a layer. And this afternoon, it is already in the low 70s. And the sun feels great. In the shade, I feel a little bit cool with that little east breeze kicking in. High of 73 in Atlanta today, 71 in Blairsville, and 73 in Peachtree City. We've had some cool nights, which have allowed for a lot of fall colors to show through, not just in the mountains, but also in the metro. Check out this photo from Lawrenceville yesterday. Karen was walking at the area lake and park. You can see some of that fall color in the background, but we've still got a ways to go to get to peak. More color starting to show up in the mountains, where you can see we are getting closer to the peak up in those highest elevations. So if you're heading to the North Georgia mountains today to check out some fall foliage or do some apple picking, it is a crisp and cool start this afternoon, though. We should also reach the low 70s up there. So looking really nice. High pressure going to keep us dry over the next several days with warmer weather on the way. But the rain, the thunderstorm activity with that high pressure in control, just not going to allow it to move into North Georgia. So in that uh, instead, rather, we talk about warm weather moving in. Look at the end of the week. 78 on Friday, 79 Saturday. In fact, this weekend I've got us up to 80 for Sunday. Records are in the mid 80s, so not quite that warm, but we are looking at a spectacular stretch of fall weather. On the other hand, we need some rain. I don't think it's in the cards for us over the next week. I think maybe past Halloween will bring in more rain and colder weather. Crash? We will take those tens, that's for sure. Unfortunately, this red alert is for Carroll County. Big heads up. There it is, high above us. The Sky Tracker showing that police investigation off to the right on I 20 eastbound at Highway 113 in Temple. That's going to be closed for a while. And then on the other side of the road, a wreck reported. You can see that flashing lights there on I 20 westbound at Highway 113. Let's go over to the maps real quick, get you around this one because there is a simple solution. Let me just get out of the way. You see the black and the red indicator letting us know the eastbound side is the investigation. The westbound side is a wreck. Either way, you want to avoid it. Use Highway 78 Veterans Memorial Highway. That is your bet for an alternate through Carroll County, whether you're stretching between Bremen, Temple, or Villarica in either direction. West Expressway really fills up from Thornton Road past Six Flags all the way to 285. And heads up for this wreck right here in Brookhaven, North Druid Hills at Bright. Cliff Road, busy intersection, and a lot to clean up. Christy? This morning, the Gwinnett County District Attorney says it is planning to retry the murder of this Metro Atlanta father, Bradley Coleman. Less than 24 hours ago, a judge declared a mistrial. Three men were on trial in this case, and it just started last week. So this decision came after a line of questioning involving one of the defendant's ex-girlfriend. Listen. That statement was... My house friend did a felony murder. Objection, your honor. It was that moment right there that brought this whole thing down. The state was questioning conversations the woman had with her mother. The defense objected, saying the line of questioning was leading. The judge then declared a mistrial. Coleman was pumping air in his tires at the quick trip on Peachtree Parkway when police say there was an attempted carjacking. Coleman was shot and killed. We're going to bring you updates as soon as we do learn more about that new trial date. Now let's get you up to date on what you need to know about the war in Israel. This is a live look this morning at the Israel-Gaza border, where Israel continues to increase its strikes on Gaza as Gaza also sends rockets over to Israel. A third humanitarian and convoy entered Gaza yesterday. Gaza medical officials say more than 5,000 Palestinians have been killed. Israel is reporting 1,400 have died and more than 200 hostages are being held by Hamas. Also happening today, we will hear from state lawmakers on a lawsuit over funding disparities at historically black colleges and universities. The federal lawsuit being filed today is against the Georgia Board of Regents for the state university system and others. The lawsuit alleges black land grant universities lost 200 million in resources between 2011 and 2022. 
In just a few hours, the Atlanta-based CDC will release a report that details harassment of health workers. We are told the harassment includes threats, bullying, bullying, verbal abuse, and other actions from both patients and co-workers. The findings will highlight the link between harassment and poor mental health among health care workers. This morning, a lot of working Americans are trying to lock in affordable health care during their company's open enrollment period. But as these premiums soar, a lot of families having to pay hundreds of dollars more out of pocket for the same coverage they had before. According to a new survey this morning by the Kaiser Family Foundation on employer benefits, the average annual family plan now costs about $24,000 a year. And on average, employees are paying around $6,500 for their share while the company foots the bill. That is about a $500 increase. If you anticipate having health needs, if you have chronic health conditions, then you may want to have a plan with lower cost sharing, that's lower deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurances. Alternatively, if you're relatively healthy, you may want to pay less money up front, and you want, may want to go for a plan that has a lower premium contribution. There's also the annual out-of-pocket maximum. Once that's met, most plans cover services 100% for the rest of the year. The red alert's going to continue with a police investigation. I-20 eastbound at Highway 113, a wreck on the other side of the wall. I-20 westbound at Highway 113 as well. Either way, you want Highway 78 as an alternate in and out of Carroll County and a wreck right here on Briarcliff at North Druid Hills. Aisha? All right, well, we are headed out the door to enjoy a perfect 11 Alive day. Yeah, as long as you can stay safe on those roads, you'll get to enjoy the weather later. We'll Thanks see you back us. here tomorrow morning. Oh, hey, girl, sorry. Hey, girl. <laughs> My bad. My bad.